day, the last surviving smiling creator besides Catnap, which means Catnap probably wiped out all of them. Loads of little smiling creatures the main hero encounters, but it seems like the main mascots involved in the big initiatives were eight, with only Catnap and Dog Day left. Talking about how much of Dog Day is left, it's actually like half of his body, and he's posed as if crucified, knowing Catnap. A psychotic creature who started their own religious sect with Prototype as its god. Prototype is the central figure of this sect, acting as its god. He explains that along with many other dolls, they didn't submit to Prototype and disagreed with his brutal extermination of all employees, earning them the title of heretics, those who go against the righteous path from Catnap's point of view. This leads to Catnap committing another mass murder, killing all who don't submit to Prototype or aren't under his control. Poor Dog Day suffers a terrible punishment, half his body chomped off, imprisoned, enduring agony every day. When the hero reaches Dog Day, he explains it's too late for him. And despite knowing he'll die, his selfless nature shows through as he still cares about the innocents. He tells the hero to leave him behind and save others, as it's too late for him. According to the character, the little smiling creatures manipulated by Catnap invade Dog Day's body, taking control of his body and mind, instantly turning him hostile, chasing after the hero! At this point, Dog Day is probably already dead, leaving only a corpse that the little smiling creatures can control. This reveals the terrifying way these little creatures can possess a lifeless body, animating it and somehow controlling every part of it as if the corpse were alive! They don't just mindlessly carry and drag the body around, but rather invade the host's body and mind like a parasite, taking complete control. Interestingly, how is Dog Day still alive, given that his lower half is bitten off? Apparently, there's some artifact that prevents excessive blood loss and saves him from death, judging by the freshness of the blood and the presence of an artifact that stopped it. It's very likely that Dog Day was recently found and imprisoned, now undergoing temporary treatment until further adjustments and surgical interventions are made to save his life and stop the blood loss. It's also worth noting that Dog Day is missing his lower half, raising questions about how he handles natural functions like digestion. Likely he's unable to do so because of the loss of his lower half. Dog Day might have acted as a spy, living among hostile dolls, falsely presenting his true intentions of betrayal. Upon discovering this, Catnap attacked him and punished him for treason, leaving him in his current chamber, crucified as an example to other heretics or opponents. Another possibility is that he was hiding and was found, then subjected to the same punishment, but I believe he pretended to be a supporter of Prototype, and was then discovered to have been a spy all along, with his betrayal being the reason for his punishment. Such punishment displaying him to show others what happens to heretics seems to have happened recently. This might be a deliberate message from Prototype to the hero and all other dolls about what awaits them as punishment and retribution. Despite his brutal punishment, Dog Day hasn't lost courage and soul, remaining on the right side, understanding that Prototype is mistaken. Perhaps he was one of the originals who worked with Poppy to find their angel savior. Poppy explains that if any doll tries to escape, they will meet a deadly fate at the hands of Prototype. Thus, they are forced to stay and obey him. Therefore, working together with Poppy, they decide to work with other dolls, Joining them are the smiling creatures, especially Dog Day, who for years has been trying to find a way out and save others, who one by one perished at the hands of Catnap, who became a vessel for Prototype. According to Dog Day and his visible condition, it's highly likely that he was just punished for his crimes against Prototype. This is what happens to Kissy Missy at the end of the chapter when she suddenly reveals her true intentions of escaping and helping others. She is attacked when left alone with Poppy and the main hero. On the other hand, Poppy seems to have had a clear goal, to escape and help Godar, so she was locked in her box when she fell asleep or went into hibernation, kept under the guard of Huggy Wuggy, the first level of defense to prevent any intrusion or attempts to free her. 
It's not entirely clear why Catnap or Prototype didn't just kill her upon discovering she was a heretic, but perhaps she is too valuable and important to them to simply kill. Maybe she even carries the essence of life for all dolls, the poppy flower. Therefore, instead of killing her, they safely put her into a deep sleep. Now the question is, how far does Prototype's control over the dolls extend? It's easy to believe that the only way he controls the dolls is psychologically, considering how he convinces each doll to work with him. Catnap, originally Theodore Gramble, an orphan with no friends or family, was saved by Prototype and felt his care and attention, explaining his loyalty. For some dolls, they follow Prototype because they see the cruelty of adults and scientists viewing them as the real evil demons who follow those who fight against them no matter how far they go. Many adults were indifferent, but since Prototype was the only one who could free them, they followed him to not die of starvation, knowing that he controls the food supplies, which could be the last remaining employees, their remaining bodies somehow preserved to not decompose, or even orphans. The last method of control is fear. Catnap attacks and kills those who don't follow him and scares all the dolls into obeying Prototype and listening to him. Miss Light even mentions how much she wanted to kill Prototype, being trapped in school, forced to fight and eat her colleagues, whom she turned, like devils, to survive. Thus we see that Prototype controls others through force, manipulation, or fear. But there's another way, as seen with Dog Day. It could be said that Dog Day dies when the little smiling creatures invade his body, but as a result, he succumbs to them. So another way Prototype can control the dolls is through the little smiling creatures that invade the host's bodies and literally take over their minds like parasites. For the little smiling creatures, however, their way of control is their terrifying thirst, which Catnap promises to quench if they follow him. As Dog Day explains, they eat to fill what they lack inside themselves. These little toys follow Catnap to avoid that very thing. And in return, they are fed. <clears throat> we try to fight it. The prototypes control. I am the last of the smiling critters. Listen to me. You need to get out of this place. You need to live. You and Poppy could fix this. End this madness. The torment. Another motivator is that if the little smiling creatures don't follow Catnap's orders, they will surely be killed and eaten, as we've seen many of them were pierced or killed in the trailers. The little smiling creatures seem to have been rewarded, and Dog Day was tied to the wall as a reward for their obedience. Therefore, they invade Dog Day and consume him from the inside, as we hear Dog Day struggling and suffering, choking on his own blood, losing his voice box, and finally, control over his weak and frail body. 